Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the channel. And what I'd like to do in this video is take a look at the cutting edge war bond because I think there's some really interesting things going on with this. And it kind of shows us the future direction as to what they're going to do with new weapons coming to the game. There is a discussion to be had over power creep. Um, but yeah, let's just break this all down because I think this is super interesting. So this is the brand new cutting edge premium war bond. Obviously, this is available for 1,000 super credits, which of course you can earn by just playing the game. And a notable thing is these premium war bonds, you can actually earn super credits in the war bond as well. So if I just quickly go over that, there's 100 there, uh, there's 100 here, and there's 100 there. So there's only three pages, but you essentially get 300 super credits back for unlocking this. So in effect, yes, you have to pay 1,000 credits for it, um, but you will get 300 back. So it's only really 700. But like I said, the value of the credits, it doesn't really matter because you can earn them through playing the game. You know, just looking in friendship bunkers, looking in storage containers, looking in uh, probes and drop pods and all of that stuff. You can find them all over the map. So you just play more of the game. You will get more super credits, which is a cool thing. Anyway, there's some interesting stuff going on with this. Uh, I think the first thing we should probably look... Well, we need to talk about this, the uh, last 16 sickle, because this is a very, very good primary weapon. It's basically the best energy weapon. And this is where the discussion of the, um, I guess, the power creep comes in. Um, but before we get onto that, I just want to touch on this because I'm not entirely sure what this is doing, but this might be a crazy powerful um, upgrade to your drop up, your, well, your, your booster, basically. So this is localization confusion, increases the um, the time between enemy encounters. It's not very descriptive. Now, I'm I, this could be something which is delaying enemy spawns, potentially, if that's true. Then on higher difficulties, this could be really, really strong. Again, I don't know if this is working. I've used it on a few missions. I can't confirm or deny what it's even doing. But this might be a really, really strong um, booster to take, especially for higher difficulties. Because reducing the amount of enemies or reducing the rate at which the enemies spawn in or between... Okay, so it's between encounters. Let me be very clear here. So I, what I'm sort of thinking is there's an enemy spawn. You destroy that. And then there's a timer before another bug breach or spawn, let's say. That's increased, is it? Again, I don't really know, but this might be a really powerful um, booster. Okay, let's talk about the weapon because uh, I think this is probably going to be something that... Um, it, it's really interesting to me, this is. So, firstly, look at the stats, right? The damage is only 55. Fire rate is 750, though, and it's light armor penetrating, and it's heat, obviously, because it's an energy weapon. So this means it will overheat if you just fire it nonstop, and you will need to... Uh, essentially reload it to change the heat sink but because it's energy based you can fire let it cool down fire let it cool down fire let it cool down and in effect you will have unlimited ammunition but this is where things get really interesting right so if we come back off this and we go back to the original um battle pass or the original look for the original weapon i guess this the sickle on paper this don't look too bad right 300 damage per second it doesn't really have any recoil fire limit okay but this weapon itself is, it's just not great. And this is where the debate about power creep will come in. I don't think there's any time you take this over the, 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 the sickle. There's literally no point taking this because the sickle is a hell of a lot more effective actually in the game. Now, there is a debate whether the sickle itself is a great weapon or not. I mean, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's a good weapon. It's obviously the latest weapon in the game. It's a fun weapon to use. Um, but yeah, let, let's just go and take a look at some of the usage case. So let's take a look at this sickle and what's making it appear to be such a, a really good weapon. Well, firstly, like I said, you can keep firing this over and over again if you manage your temperature correctly. I don't always do that. You can see here, I, I get it wrong, so I need to reload. But it reloads quite quick. It's got very good damage at range. It's very accurate. And if you utilize crouch, then you're just going to be pinpoint accurate with this weapon. And it's just going to be, it's really strong for clearing out all of the small enemies. Anything that's lightly armored or small, you can dominate them with this weapon. Now, it's obviously going to have downsides, yeah? It's not as powerful as the shotguns when it comes to close range combat. It's not as great at dealing with like a bug breach when you're on top of it. But when you're sitting in this position here, it can feel like an incredible weapon. And this is where I, you know, I really like the sort of balance of the weapons in Helldivers 2. Because, like, you look at this here, and the, the use case I'm showing you here, this weapon's going to look really strong, but there's going to be times where you're going to get swamped and you wish you didn't have this weapon, you want a shotgun of some description, right? Now, I think moving more towards this sort of uh, mission-specific and enemy-specific loadouts is the way we're going to go ultimately with the game. The mechs are a great example of this. The mechs against the automatons 
are not particularly the best, right? Because the automatons will just hit you from range, and it's not great. But still, there are things you can do. Like, you can take a, the, the shield dome stratagem, drop that on the floor, and, and use your mech around that to protect it. So there are ways around it. Anyway, we're talking about this weapon here, and I think it is a strong weapon. I don't think it's some crazy OP weapon. It's strong, it's good at what it does, but the issue I've got, I think, is it's just way better than the other energy-based rifle. Now, when we look at the scythe, what are we going to do with that weapon? You know, what's the, the situation with it? Because it's just garbage, right, compared to this, and this is in a premium battle pass, and you kind of have to spend premium currency to get it but i'm not really i ain't really got a big issue with that because obviously you can still earn the premium currency through just playing the game but i think this is an interesting point isn't it what's going to happen with weapons as new war bonds come out are they simply just going to get replaced and then older weapons are just sort of forgot about they've got no place in the game is it even feasible for them to endlessly balance all of the weapons like look at this bit here i'm getting pushed down here i mean it's really good against these bile spewers anyway their weak point is the head shooting them in the head with it it does quite a lot of damage to them pretty quickly I did have to reload, though. That's kind of like the, I guess, the, the balance with the weapon. If you want to go fully auto, you can deal with some things that are close to you. But the issue is going to be you're going to need to reload. But like I said, the reload isn't really that long. So I don't think it's that much of a downside to the weapon. But it's definitely the best laser weapon. I don't think it's the best primary weapon overall. But it's still the best laser weapon. If you had to ha ask me what the best primary weapon is, I'd still probably go for the Punisher at the moment. But I've still not used the electric shotgun yet in this battle pass. Anyway, that's the, the last 16. I think it's a good weapon. A really, really good weapon. So this is obviously the electricity energy-based war bond. Um, that's the theme of it. And there's some really cool effects. Check this out. All of the body armor in this war bond provides 95% resistance to arc damage. This means Tesla Towers, it also means the arc thrower, they do 5% of the damage they would normally do to you. This means you can kind of just run around and take that damage. Now, of course, of course, it's generally your allies which are going to kill the arc thrower. At least that's what I've found anyway. Apologies to all the hell divers I've killed with it. Um, so, yeah, it would be nice if they wore it. But obviously, that's all this armor gives you. That's the only bonus of it. But I think it's pretty cool because, again, it's very thematic to this set. And because this war bond has just dropped, a lot of people are going to be using energy weapons anyway. So there's probably a really good argument for using this just to sort of prevent... <laughs> all that friendly fire coming through yeah and of course like the helmets they still don't have any bonuses on uh you get a nice head tap victory pose and uh, uh a cloak and you can see like the, the things that i've unlocked right i haven't unlocked this armor but i might actually get that because i've got enough um uh medals for that but yeah let's move on to page two so again page two you get another suit of armor again with the same effect on which i think is really cool a helmet which is probably i don't know again this is all personal preference but that's probably the nicer looking helmet in this pack to me um and yeah another cloak so then we move on to this right the punisher plasma now i've not actually used this yet so i can't really comment too much on it but it looks like it does aoe damage almost like it's an energy-based grenade launcher but as a primary weapon this could be really good and again like you know just again i suppose being a bit speculatory here but this compared to the last 16 the last 16 is very accurate damage um and it doesn't really deal with hordes of enemies super well but it's great at range this probably is going to deal with hordes of enemies a lot better than the last 16 would. So again, you've got that decision-making process you have to go through when you're selecting your weapon, which I think is really cool. Uh, again, uh, this is probably going to be a massive, massive item in the game. This is something which I'm going to... I I'm going to get this unlocked, basically, and check this out. But I've got a feeling the stun grenade is going to be, like, super powerful. Because if you stun a charger... And then you can just easily line up the headshots or even just stun a charger and then just shoot it in the weak spots. It doesn't even have to be a charger. Will this work on Bile Titans? I mean, if it does, that's that's going to be pretty strong as well. Although it is quite easy to hit Bile Titans in the head. Um, still, keeping enemies still, 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 <laughs> in a position and then being able to deploy ordnance on them is going to be massively strong. I mean, you can already do this anyway. There are um weapons that allow you to do this but having this on grenade could be really really strong question will always be though will this be better than like the impact grenades for just getting you out of those bad situations and of course this will not blow up um bug holes because it doesn't have explosive damage it's just a stun grenade right again i'm really looking forward to using that but i think this could be a really powerful item in this war bond and now moving on to the final page um again this is going to be a bit speculatory but i would assume <laughs> now maybe i'll be <laughs> maybe i'll be proven wrong but i would assume this is not great 
I cannot ever see a world where we are changing from the rapid fire pistol, of which I forgot the name of. <laughs> where is it? Yeah, this. The R19 Redeemer. Literally amazing. This gets you out of so many bad positions. It's not even funny. Right? So I don't think I don't think we're going to be swapping for the, the last pistol. Unless, unless it's just something you want to do, like a thematic energy build. I don't know. Maybe you take the laser guard dog, you take the last 16, you take the last pistol. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's something people want to do. But I can't see that being too strong. Again, you get more premium credits like we went over. And now this, the Arc Blitzer. So this is the uh, the shotgun arc weapon. Again, I'm not too sure how powerful this is. Could be really good. It's probably going to be a lot better at dealing with AoE enemies that are really close to you. So groups of enemies than the last 16 will be. Uh, and then you get armor, which is the 95% resistance to arc damage in the helmet. Um, which I'd probably say that's the second best one in this pack. I don't know what it is, but I really like this helmet. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean that's what we're looking at for this uh, war bond. I think it actually it is pretty decent. So I was really looking forward to seeing what this war bond would look like in the game and whether it's going to just introduce like some ridiculous OP weapons that everybody needs. It doesn't look like that's the case, and I think that's great for the game. It looks like though there is an element of power creep involved where maybe other weapons of the same type are going to be supplanted by these newer weapons. If that continues, again, I don't know. But is it an issue? Again, I don't know. If they're adding loads and loads of weapons to the game, you can argue that maybe it isn't. I just don't want to be in a scenario where it's like, if you don't have this stratagem, then you cannot, you're just not as effective as having a different stratagem. Which I suppose you can argue is in the game already. But I suppose if we fast forward to everybody being level 50 and having access to everything, and everybody's unlocked all stratagems and all of that stuff and all of the weapons, then... Should we be in a case where there's only certain weapons that people should take? No. I mean, the, the CEO says we shouldn't be, and I agree with that. I don't want to be in a world where I cannot just take whatever stupid loadout I want to take myself. You can see in this gameplay clip here, I've been using a lot of the uh, expandable anti-tank. It's not expandable, is it? <laughs> expendable. What the hell? What is with that and me? Uh, but the, the expandable anti-tank is really, really strong because you can call it down every, one, well, every minute. So there's just loads of rocket launchers lying around. And then, yeah, I like to take the guard dog backpack because it sort of gives me that added security. Um, but nothing's really stopping me from taking another weapon. I could take a grenade launcher, um, which probably would be quite effective, actually, or even a railgun or something else that I can just carry that doesn't require um, a backpack, um, I guess. But then again, it doesn't really matter anyway because if you just wanted to... If the, a big enemy spawns, just throw down the eat rocket launcher, pick it up, just do what you need to do, well, fire the two rockets in, then get your other weapon back. But yeah, I think this is actually a pretty good state for the game to be in. I think there's going to be a lot of funny, probably YouTube content out there saying that this weapon is like some crazy OP, insane weapon. I mean, I and mean, really, I think it's a strong weapon. I don't think it's OP. I think if you start comparing it to things like just the assault rifles, even the standard weapon you get at the start of the game. Yeah, this, this weapon's got more staying power because you can, in theory, never, ever, ever overheat the thing and just keep firing, firing, firing. But there is a lot of downtime waiting for it to cool down. And if you get swamped by enemies, you don't have that immediate response of being able to dump fire in. And there's also one thing I've completely forgot to mention in all of this. Um, so I'll mention it at the end of the video. <laughs> video typical. Um, but it's got a, a warm-up time. So when you start firing, it doesn't immediately fire. It takes a few seconds to kick in. And then it will start firing. I think it probably takes a second. It feels like it takes a lifetime. Especially if you're getting drowned by bugs and you're like, uh-oh. I need to start doing as much damage as possible. All right, guys, there you go. I want you to let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Like I said, I was really looking forward to seeing how this first premium war bond got implemented because I didn't want to be in that scenario where it's must need and everybody's got to buy all of this stuff. Like I've said, though, I am not totally against um, premium stuff being, you know, having like maybe the odd thing, which is super cool to use. I'm not saying OP, simply because you can earn the credits by playing the game. You don't have to go into the store and buy them. This isn't like you need this, so you better start paying your $10, $15 or whatever to get the coins and then get out of it. Also, you've got a salute at the end of a mission and watch this hunter come in and just absolutely stab me in the back. Oh no, stab the ally. I mean, what the hell is that? All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, then yeah, do let me know about all this stuff in the comments below and uh, I'll catch you lovely lot on the next one. GG, well played.